You see, language had evolved for purpose and for living. So we got to be smart about this thing. Just like your child can learn Spanish, Portuguese, French, queries, but they're right up inside of day. I think it's a cursed shame for say you come from Guyana, you can't talk Creoles. Some people say, well, I've been away a long time and I don't even know how to talk it. I better laugh at talk it. It's your thing. Is you thing talk it. Yes. Because it sets you apart. Me a country girl, me know for talk it. And me can write it too, you know? And me can read it. dining in Japan in the more traditional kinds of ways in restaurants at certain hotels. So here is this one. You enter this place. Your shoes are off. I took my shoes off. And there the closets here, I guess this for coats and stuff, but in bedrooms they usually have this old style. So you slide this for the the, they're stacking chairs in here and coats but this is tatami floors and look at this simple decor like that on the wall and I guess companies will bring their executives here and they sit on these chairs with the zaboton, the cushions and let me see what about my knee a crack and the table in the middle so your feet are under the table that way all tatami no shoes in here the lighting is very soft and i just love these you know the the vase let me see with a little sprig and that um, ceramic thing but it's not much going on the walls are kind of bare but the, the, it looks really nice it's like a kind of a mild sage color yeah i saw some other rooms over there i want to go see i left my shoe that's not the way to put your shoe but, but hey and that's me I wanna go see these other little rooms. So this one here says summer. That one says winter. Go on aside. <laughs> summer, winter. Oh my gosh. Look at this. And then look at this room. I like it. And look at that. Beautiful, very pretty. Set up for same situation. You will sit and put your feet in there. And I like the simplicity of the the core, like the plant. One plant in the vase. It's very, very simple. Yeah. So this is the summer room. Look at that. This one here is the spring room. Uh, that one seems like it's being cleaned. Like it's being cleaned. I mean, the people's way. Let me go along. Because you think they must have said this foreigner. This foreigner had three cents. So there I am taking the picture. All right, let me go. There you have your Japanese dragon. Samurai sword in its mouth. Get um, origami. Origami 
simple decor. <clears throat> chopsticks so yeah so I'm going to go now back to my room yeah. <laughs> thank you and this hotel does weddings and stuff like that so look at this decor i love this this is <clears throat> cherry blossom twig i think i think it's fake but um they do what is called the uh, japanese floral arrangement like this <clears throat> And then they have their little decoration things. The slippers. Very simple. Very cute. Yeah. And then you have some kind of an installation here. I think this is a Kanazawa castle, maybe and bamboo and rocks very simple i don't know the significance of this but it's very mood making <clears throat> yeah. so let me go and some kind of a insulation here but to be in japan is to see simplicity at its finest not too much fuss or it's made to look less fussy some kind of a landscape with a boat and bonsai look oh my gosh look at this look at this lamp Just love it. And this is the way to the restroom. And there is this lamp. And there is that lamp. Love them. Love them, love them, love them. See, people take their own kind of art and architecture and they make it fancy. These are for the ladies. I wonder what's going on in there. Let me see if anything different. Have your soaps and nothing special here, popori things to wash your hand and stuff like that um let me see if they have japanese style toilets here oh these are western style i wish i could have seen the japanese style toilets to show you but these are western toilets they're all heated and you have your washlet and your bidet and like i told you all before you wash it before and after. Nothing special here. Yeah. So I'm looking down on the city. It's all snowing. Everything is white. I don't know if you can see, but maybe you can't, but the wind is howling. That's the wind making sound. There's a crack somewhere. So, 
I gotta go find my room. I think it's this way. Like I'm lost. Here, next installation here. Elevator. That's a banqueting hall. Wrong place. Wrong place. This word says Otearai. Otearai. Otearai is the washroom. This te, I know that means hand. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, right. the elevators are right here. So I will go down in the elevator. Stairs, what do you call it? Stairs, kaida. Kaida nai. Kaida Oh, so why? <laughs> she said no stairs. I was asking her if it was stairs because I only go. I was asking her for the stairs I can go down one level, but there are no stairs, so I will get on the elevator and hope that it doesn't cut out. So here I get to go say mashta. So I'm gonna go down one. Hi, Denise, Rodriguez, and Marcy. Marcia. Okay. Yeah, this is a very old hotel. Imagine. It's so old. It's an international hotel. They got key. I don't know the last day. I got a key like this for any hotel. But this is it. This is it. And here I am. I just think I'm opening. Oh, good. So this is it. And I put up my clothes for tomorrow, my suit and stuff for tomorrow. And of course, you have your deadbolt. You know the New York thing? And then I have my slipper for the room there. And these are my boots I came with today. Look at them. I have spikes on them to walk on the ice. I have to take off my shoes and put on my slippers. And I didn't bring sleeping clothes, so here are my sleeping clothes. My yukata. I will take this and I will sleep in this nice cotton. Very nice. But since I came to the people's room, I did my own thing and messed up. So this is one of the beds. Yeah. So I went to sleep and had a two hour nap. And I'm so exhausted. So this is the bed. Very simple. And I took the table that was by the little sofa there and I put it in the middle because I want to work. So yeah, very simple. Two beds. I made a mess of one. See there? That's where I was sleeping. And you had you have two sofas. Very old hotel. With a lamp and nothing special. Nothing special. But back in the day this would have been the hotel to come to. A little fridge, a little TV. I would not be doing any TV. I am a tired soul. I need to to sleep. You get the, all the regular amenities in a room. It looks dark because Japanese tend to have these kind of mood lights. 
and big bathroom. So we usually have a shower, uh, a slipper for the bathroom. But you have everything. You have your hair dryer, your towels. You get your nice toilet that's nice and warm. I tell you, I can never get used to a cold toilet seat. I've been spoiled, very spoiled. And I know chilling. I come from outside, so I don't need, I don't need this anymore. Yeah. Here I am. Raining. It's a lot of storm, and stuff like that. So I came down the mountains because tomorrow I have business in this city, and it's a little treacherous to come down. Um, taxi drivers and stuff don't want to drive, and I can't afford to be held up. So that's why I'm in the city. And then it's my birthday. So I had a very nice dinner and stuff like that. So nothing special here. Well, yeah, I'll up to for the new year. I'm going to go now because it's, it's 8 o'clock at night, but kind of tired. So if you want, you can go back and watch the live. I was showing what I was having for dinner. And it was a Japanese dinner. Then I borrow a croissant and a piece of chicken from a neighbor. <laughs> Somebody who was eating in the restaurant. How the year treating y'all? I know. This year I said I would go snow, snowshoeing, but I can't chance it. Snow too much. Now and there is a lot, but it's so cold. The other morning I wake up is minus seven degree. Y'all ever feel? A cold that you know this cold come in and your body telling you it gonna be wicked cold you know one night last weekend I was in my bed I in a down cover you know a cover under down I under down I got a heater running a split unit heater and I feel this hand of coldness coming these things are prick my skin and I cover up you know nice and supposedly warm so I put on the electric blanket and thing. Yep, that's the kind of weather I'm dealing with. So it's the same thing happening on this side of the world. And since we're catching up, and I'm sitting down here in this nice Japanese sleeper place, um, I did a little workshop for some kids in Bahamas. A Boxonian um, woman is with a girl. Um, she asked me to talk to her students about living in Japan. So listen, if you get children and so you want me to talk to them about Japan and show them things, you can tell me. I'm going to facilitate it. So I was up at 11 to maybe 12 talking to those kids to get them at 8.30. And so, hey, man, hey, coffee, you're Dubai. But that chili at this Japan here. Yeah, I've been telling them that I was giving a workshop to kids in the Bahamas about Japan, talking about the festivals. So I showed them some of the festivals we have and how we celebrate them. But the thing that strike me with living here is that they, they seem to appreciate their culture. They use it in every way they can. Look at this bed cover here. You look at it and you know it's Japanese themes. Look at the color, brown. And this kind of design, they carry it with them across there. It's there. Um, so it's very consistent with Japanese thing. Of course, you have Western style living, but they tend to appreciate their culture. I would go to certain parks and see old people all people from different parts of Japan, they come by the bus load and the train load and they come in to enjoy Japanese environment and landscape and so on. And I said to myself, how many ordinary people from the places where I've come from who actually go and visit parts of their country? Is it that they don't have money to do it or they're too busy earning a living? To, and they couldn't do it. I know back in the day, we used to have tour. Well, we quit coffee, you know, but tour. You ever went to school tour? And we will go on school tours to see different parts of the country. I don't know if um, 
people do that in Guyana still, but that's how, you know, people can enjoy the country. In this case, though, um, I don't see children, I've never seen children go on school tour. Maybe they do, more than likely, but I see adults you know, droves of 70-year-olds, 80-year-olds. They would go to a different area in the city. And when they come, they come with a notebook and guide with flag. And the guides carry them around and they would patronize certain specialty restaurants. They would patronize the parks, the temples, and invigorate their communities. Yeah. So I'm thinking about Guyana with its oil and gas. You know, a little village like Buxton, so? You can arrange your little tours. We are premier village. We got things to show. You see, Island Hill, all something. Them that can be preserved for ourselves and to have a, our stories to tell. I've, I've lived here. I've lived in Hawaii. Hawaii get them little plantation with all them thing back in the day, logia kind of thing. You're going to see them thing there. Yeah. Some people make an argument that against making your home, your home place museum for people to come and spy and look, look on you like if they're looking at zoo. There is that thing, you know, um, people observing people's culture that way, preserving it in a way they want to. But if we can preserve our communities and appreciate the things we make and do, then I think we're richer. Um, I'm better for it because I'm seeing it here. Everything in this place smacks Japanese. Even if they get a Western thing, it gets a Japanese twist. Either in the color or something. Amazing, amazing. So when I do these kinds of recordings, it's to just to show what I enjoy, what I see, and things like that. And some people will say, well, you're box on your Guyanese, you know, to the hilt. Why are you not in Guyana? Well, I'm a human being. Me get a right for travel and live in where I live. Yeah. Broad my horizons and so. Doesn't mean that I live abroad. I don't have allegiance to where I live or love for my country. I do. Barn and bread box on your neighbor string berry day. Eh -heh. So, but then you get opportunities like this. You know, I was once a little girl in the village of Boxan, pull like a church rat. Yeah. But rich in experiences and traveled by way of books, in books. And I tell people, I live in Japan, but I'd been here when I was eight. And they're like, what do you mean? I said, I came here in books. And then I happened to live, I'm fortunate enough to get opportunities like this, to live and work and be a professor here. And um, yeah. And by being here, I'm able to do lots of things, you know, for my people back there and others and things that you don't know about that I don't talk about. Yep. So I count it a privilege. So on this my birthday, I am enjoying. I didn't think I'd be out today, but because I haven't been out like for like two weeks or more. Let me see. When I got back in January. I haven't been out since I've been back on January 6th or something like that. INC Road. Mm -mm. Too much snow and so and work. Anyway, what is the story coming up? If y'all get topics you want me to talk about, send it, DM me, tell me so I can start research. These things don't just fly with me, you know, as God do research to share these stories and stuff. And while you're at it, Thank you so much for following the show and subscribing and things like that. I'm 2,600 something. We're moving up, you know. That is small group. That's a small group in terms of Facebook and them influencer and who and who and who following. But it's a tidy little number of us. What is stories? A family. Mm -hmm. And we don't get comments and them kind of thing and back and all inside a day, which not good given the the kind of environment it is, it tends to be that way. But so far, people have been very nice to me and I've been nice to them and we want to continue this. So you can share and tell your friends and tell your neighbor and so on. But small is nice. I'm learning to appreciate that. Small is nice. Because I think maybe with a whole lot of bacchanal, I think maybe I cut out for that. 
but I'm here to give our stories. And there is more to what I do. Because I'm an academic, I want to tell our stories in ways that our people can understand. So every story I tell, there's a reason for telling it. And I don't want to bore you with all of the academic stuff, but just know that when I promise to write research in academia by having a PhD, I always want to see my family and my communities in it. We must tell our stories, our family stories, our whispered stories, our traditional stories, lest our children and other people come to think that theirs are the only stories they are or that our stories are not worthy. Our stories and how these Creoles can carry all our experiences. Yeah, we can, we, can, we can bear all our experiences with our Creole language. Somebody challenged that and said, oh, you know, show me when Creoles can tell things in the future. What kind of stupid is that? Creoles been talk about future all, all of that kind of thing. Me go, me a go, go. Me a go, go. Me a go, go, a future. How a fight is that? I excuse my French. <laughs> I said Creoles can, can't talk about future. And can't, that nonsense. Language can't talk about everything. You know? And the person said, um, the language now grow with the times. Well, guess what? It mightn't grow in ways that we think, but the structure is there. The grammar is there. And it doesn't mean that we have to make every single word a Creole word. No, 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 no. What I am saying is that this language is alive and well. I've studied language. I studied on the linguists, you know, of the highest order. One of my professors, she was a linguist that they consulted when they were making this movie Avatar. And they were making this foreign language and so And you would not believe what Hollywood wants to think is a, a way of making a fake language is, is the way to make it. No, no, no. Language has rules. So she had to look at their fake language to see if it even fits the code of the grammar of a language. Yeah, this thing is not easy. I had to make up my own, lang my own language to a language that's never been spoken. I've done that. So I know this linguistic thing. And, and when I tell y'all, Creoles alive and well, it's good. Because when I first started in Facebook, people don't talk Creoles. Now I talk Creoles for so. Siri and what other what one, what other one name? Alexa. Then can't talk Creoles. Not, not teach them, not teach them. So we can talk Creoles to carry our stories, to hide things, to speak to each other in certain ways. One word is one story. Kofi, ah, we have to say a badding. A whole box and laugh. All the guys say about him. One word. One name. Everybody get it. And you can get all the permutations of that story. Our culture and language is alive and well. Now make nobody fool of you. Until I said this language dead. I told you I studied um, linguistics and I studied languages. And every day a language is dying. Because his people have died out and the people don't want to teach them picnic their own language. They don't want to talk it. Because they say if they talk it to them people and then picnic, they pick the down to school. Well, what kind of is this though? People got two and three and four languages. Then bilingual, then trilingual, then whatever. And mind you, where well, you can't talk plenty language, you're not a linguist. You're a polyglot. You're not a linguist. A linguist is a person who, who, who um, studies the science of language. The science of language. It's a linguist. It's a scientific study of language. A polyglot is one who speaks many languages. So we know that people ain't stupid. You know when you go to Thailand? Thailand, then people, then people ask you somewhere along the line. When they don't ask you age and all kind of thing, they ask you how many languages you speak. You know why they're asking you that? To gauge your intellect. Because they believe that people would speak three and four languages very smart. Mm -hmm. So they're going to ask me how much you can speak. And then they know you're smart. Yeah. So because humans are able to speak many languages, there's no reason we should tell our little boxing and Guyanese picnic that they can't talk Creoles. Nonsense. Me want to invite me at the highest um, 
podium and symposium for break down this thing. Because I got it, you know, I'm ready for them. I want to sit down with them universal kind of people and explain to them and give them a proposal for what to do with Creole leads and why. But I think many people know why there, why they should teach Creole leads um, and why they should keep it alive. But I think once it's spoken, it's safe. And because we're speaking it on platforms like these, it's going to stay alive. As long as me alive here, me talk with Creoles. I'm going to talk the kind I would talk about Stan. You don't get different kind of Creoles, right? You got Creoles from Borbies. You got Creoles from Esquivo. You got Boxing and Creoles. All of that. They get variations in tones and words and things like that. And because it's in use... We, we were a good thing because many countries have lost and nations have lost their languages because nobody speaks them. And they're not encouraged to speak them. But I think those days are over when we say if these children don't know standard English, they're not going to be able to get into certain places. That's true to an extent because you, you're not, being, talking Creole is like stupid, you know. Not because you talk Creole you're stupid, you know. Um, people got them kind of thing, you know, for say, if you can't talk English, you're stupid. They say, but the, prime, but the guy in a president, he had a slip of tongue, they say, oh, he's stupid. That thing really get me mad when they talk to the president, Afran Ali, oh, the man make the slip, oh, the man dance. And the people them who talking about how he dance, saying, oh, the, oh, the, oh, the president must go go learn his pronunciation. Hey, then I get the pronunciation, a pronunciation. So, so them and all wrong, uh, uh, you know, patakal kettle black. But I listen to the man. I listen to the man for that same UN spe speech or wife he make. You see, people make slips of the tongue when certain utterances, certain sequences come too fast. And it could be that he didn't breathe well. Because what he wanted to say, it needed for him to breathe. And he said it a number of times, and I'm watching the breath. And how I know this because I studied the presidential debate between Mitt Romney and President Barack Obama and other presidents as part of my PhD thing. I had to study the slips that they made. And these slips tend to determine, um, it seemed, whether they would win their, their election or whatever the case might be. And... I studied the anatomy of those slips and why they occur. Some occur because of breathing. Like if you're going to do seven syllables in a row, that's when chance is highly likely you could make a mistake or a slip of tongue if you don't breathe properly. So there are lots of things going on there, but people say that the president don't and he can't talk. Well, I ain't a president. Support your president. I me president too. Me never meet the man, but... If I demand them vote, I demand me support, right? And it doesn't do you well or us well to be tearing down this man because the man gets slipped by the tongue. Eh -eh. If the man was a creole speaking man, it can happen. And all of us who say we speak the Queen's English, I got news for y'all. Our language is Creole influenced. And even when we think we talk in standard English, that influence is there. I don't want to go into it now, but I can go into it and break it down and show you where it occurs. We have a Creole-influenced language, English. And the same standard English, everybody boasting, they got to talk and you got to talk Creoles and whatever. You can't talk Creoles. I just just said to y'all, take Chaucer. Go back in history and see if I can read Chaucer. And Beowulf and them thing there. Them that was bad English. When we look at it, we say, eh, a da? You see, language had evolved for purpose and for living. So we got to be smart about this thing. Just like your child can learn Spanish, Portuguese, French, Creole is but they're right up inside of there. I think it's a cursed shame for say you come from Guyana, you can't talk Creole. Some people say, well, I've been away a long time and I don't even know how to talk it. I better laugh to talk it. Is your thing. Is you thing talk it. Yes. Because it sets you apart. Me a country girl, me know for talk it. I me can write it too, no? I me can read it. And how me know for write it and read it? Because I had a mother who was interested in those things. I grew up with it. 
I grew up with it. I, I always thought I could write Creoles. I could read it. I could write it and things like that. Yeah. Granted, the orthography is not always the same. But if you sound it out, we will understand what each other is saying. And when people got need for different words and so on in the culture, they will find words. I go back and I hear new words. I'm thinking, man, this language growing. They got new words. So, Mr. Whatsoever Your Face Is, I don't want to call your name. People that send the message, give me. This body, this doctor, somebody, somebody say, Creoles, not worth it because it can't, uh, it can't be used for the future when last they make new words, when last they make whatever. So I would say to Mr. So-and-so, go and live in Guyana. Go as an ethnographer and listen. You're going to see the difference. You're going to know where it's growing and how it's growing and when it's growing. For me, Mina K, it's alive and well. All our talk them. Yep. Yes. Them who got a big doctorate can talk it. Time and place language is, is for appropriateness. And as a rhetorician, I talk about what do we use these things for? Not just as we have Creoles, but what is the use of Creoles? And for me, I use Creoles to show familiarity, to show belongingness, to relate and connect with my own people, to Teach others something about my culture. You know what it is to go to a foreign place and they say, Oh, oh, Pauline San, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Guyana. Guy Guyana, Guyana. It's like Guyana. And then I explain what Guyana means. So what is your language? Well, English and Creolese. Creolese, what's that? And then they say, Tell me something in Creolese. We say my name, Pauline Baird. My name. And so they say, Oh, this I laugh. So and I tell them little Guyanese thing, you know, and things like that. So it makes me, you know, um, bring diversity to my situations and places I've been invited to. You know, like I've been invited to be a professor at this university. So when I come here, you don't see me in kimono. I don't wear kimonos. Except if we go to a banquet, the hotel provides the clothing. But I don't wear kimonos. I don't dress in no super costume. It doesn't mean anything to me. I bring the whole me, my whole guy in himself. It be cook up rice and my fry fish and my my alada because that's what they want from me. That's what I bring to this place. I bring my whole self. I mean, I'll be nobody else, you know? And just like you see me in the village, so you get me. Mm -hmm. No putting on her ears and I don't have to overdo the Creole aspects of my culture or anything. I'm just, I'm just me. I'm the product of a country and I can speak to those things that make me me. And that helps me to be unique. And so, you know, everybody sells something. When universities ask you to work there, they're calling you there because you bring something that is marketable for them. So when we have big occasions and stuff like that, hey, Dr. Pauline trots out yourself. I try to help myself and I do my thing for the school. Yeah. Or wherever I am, you know, and when you do that, doors open for you. Yeah. Doors open for you. So let's bring ourselves and coming back to why I'm saying all of this is to say that um, there's a reason for me doing this work on Facebook and YouTube. Sometimes I don't want to do it because I'm tired. And sometimes the platforms are very annoying, like Facebook annoying me right now. So I'm looking for different ways to bring these stories. When, and I feel guilty if I don't bring them every week, but I have to put that aside because nobody pays me to do this work. I'm doing it from the love for the love of. So if I miss a time or two, I never to abandon me. And I'm not even concerned about that. If one, peop if one person hears it or two people hear it, I'm good. And I'm doing it to put it in history. I'm not sure who it's for, but I know this. That I'm called to do this work and there's somebody who needs it. And if there's only one body who needs it, then I'm good. So whether I get 2,500 followers or one follower or two follower subscriber, I got to be happy with that because that's what I'm supposed to do. And in the fullness of time, all things shall work out. Mm-hmm.
I will do, do it till me, till me I want to do it no more. And if I get up one day and all of my being says, you're done, I am done. I'm not tied to it in such a way that I'm so emotional that I can't walk away. When it, it's going to change, then its nature is going to change. I'm beginning to feel um, it's changing because I really came on here with the intent to, to give you an, uh, an oral delivery of my dissertation because I got the stories from the people in the village and I wanted to give it back in ways that it can access it. I could make a book and no books on it ever hear or write in the book or see it. So I want to give it in many places as possible. I still haven't done it because I get caught up with all the other stories, but I'm slow walking there. And one day I'll be able to do it in a way that is not boring for you, for you to understand what are the stories I got from the people, why they think it's important, and why I find a space for it in the academy and what it does. We mightn't appreciate that, but other people do because... Two years ago, I did a presentation at Cambridge University, the Cambridge University in London. Yeah. And you know who I talked about? Mother Adams from Books and Sideline Dam. Cherry Glenn, them grandmother, Mother Adams. Mother Adams never graced no school door like a high school or nothing so. she never been a university, but I took her to the University of London and I told the people, this is Mother Adams' story. And I bring her here, cross these doors to grace these halls and to tell you about her. I'm bringing her into academia. The people then give rounding applause. Maybe in the best speech. Me get money, all. Yes. Me didn't know it was a competition. I was just doing a presentation. And they were so appreciative that this woman who were just, who was just maybe one parent away from slavery. I'm sure her pa or, or grandparents were slaves, pretty sure. And she might have known people, old people who were enslaved. And then I could take her to the University of Cambridge, the halls of the colonizers. So that's why I do this work. And so Buxton people and Guyanese people will always be in my stories because they are the ones for whom I represent, I have to do the work because I don't think they could imagine me, but they would have dreamed because they live, they had to dream that we will overcome. So I have to do this. I can't complain and say, you can't do it and sleep less nights. Then people are going to get licks on their back and all kind of thing, all kind of thing them endure. Me not get up, so me can't get up and talk on this thing here. Me can get up and talk on this thing here and that easy, easy for do. So sometimes when I want to do it, I say, yeah, get up. They had people that had no choice. Get up and do it. And you see this, they're calling this month coming up, Black History Month. Well, I mean, I even know if I subscribe to that, but because I don't like fads and them kind of thing. I want to talk, I talk, I want to talk, I talk. I don't want things bother me. But it's a time when people step, stop and say, let's honor um, people of this African descent. And so... There's a space for that. And it's good that you can have that because long ago you couldn't have that. Opportunities for some people. So yeah, I'm going to see what I got prepared for y'all for this February month coming up. And with that, I'm going to take myself to clean up and pull in. I'm going to get one hot tea for drink before I pull in. So I'm going to drink a little hot water and go to bed. And I'll talk to y'all when I talk to y'all. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm cut the hair and press them. You know, straight, I press me, press them. If I go in the shower, you can turn back. No worry. <laughs> yeah. My heart is in the band too. That's when you see this hair start for me. It's so thick, my finger, like a cramp. Sometimes I just want to cut them all off. But I say no. I'm not able to. Thanks for keeping my company and hearing me talk. And if you have topics you want me to address, send me in the DMs. Never and let me know so I can I can do that. Yep. And February month, I'm going to be featuring some of the works of our brother, Dr. Kwesi Ojinga. The man got word for us, man. Word. 
Yes, it could be nice. Yes, 30 hours sooner, I, I walk good. 